Hello and welcome to this webinar, which is all about optimising your Open Food Network shop front. In this session, I'm going to introduce the team as, and then I'm going to talk about some easy ways to improve your shop front, as well as how to get more people to come to your shop front. Then Louise is going to talk a bit about how to optimise your products and she's going to introduce the New Look shop front as well. Then we're going to talk about some future sessions that we've got planned and then we've got time for a Q&A as well. So I'm going to introduce Louise because we lost the first half of the original recording of this session. And so many of you know Louise already. She's been involved with the OFN since 2017. And she's worked with a number of different food enterprises, including Bentley Heath Country Market, The Chocolate Shed and Henley Chocolates. And she's passionate about helping small businesses and teaching others how to get the best out of software and problem solving. So I'm Kaylee. And you might have met me in some other webinars. Um, so I'm a sustainable food marketing strategist and I've worked with a variety of different businesses, um, publishers and not-for-profit organisations, including Pucker Herbs, Immediate Media, who published BBC magazines, and most recently with the Open Food Network since January, where I've been helping um, food enterprises with their marketing through a series of webinars and one-to-one -one, um, marketing services as well. And this is Nick. And Nick has been working with community food enterprises since 2001, and he's the founder of Stroudco Food Hub and Stroud Community Agriculture uh, before helping to start OFN UK. He works as a client-centred facilitator with development agencies and other support organisations to develop community resilience. And he also supports new community projects from first steps through initial teething problems to self-sufficiency. So I'm going to start the session off with helping with some easy ways to improve your shop front. And let's start with the order cycles our closed page. So it's useful to consider what your customers' needs and issues are at this particular moment when they reach this page. So when a customer sees that your order cycles are closed, they might be disappointed to have missed out on an opportunity to order with you particularly in these challenging times where customers might have a stronger emotional response to missing out on your order cycles than usual. So it's really important to have clear communication and to keep your customers informed and knowing what they can expect from you. A note or a message on your order cycle close page is an opportunity to keep your customers looped into what's going on. Also, it's an opportunity to develop the relationship with your customer so you can yeah, managing your customer expectations will help improve your relationship with your customer and will generate more trust. And something to think about here as well with this page is that if you sell out fast and you have this page up quite a lot for quite a long time, some customers might see your order cycle close message too often and think that you're closed all the time and just might not come back. And this could be particularly true for new customers that you might be losing out on. So don't waste this space. Use it to encourage your customers or potentially some new customers to join your mailing list or to follow you on social media. And yeah, this is a good space to do that and to make the most of it. Also, it's really important to explain what an order cycle is and you can use this space to do so. So it's you want to explain to your customer why you work this way and you can do that as well by communicating what the benefits are to your customer. So for example, by working with order cycles, this could mean that your produce is extra fresh and you're producing less waste, or your producers are producing less waste. And also ask yourself the question, do you need to have the order cycle close page up for long? Could you reopen it for the following week's order straight after the current week closes? You can also use this page to share contact details to encourage customers to get in touch with you if they've got any questions. Um, also thinking about these times, you can, yeah, if you've, if you've had to cap orders due to stock levels or packing capacity, um, you can use this space to communicate that. And also if you've implemented a priority ordering system for those who are quarantining or those in a vulnerable group, you can include a link to contact you to be added to this priority list. So it's giving your, it's a space to give your customers instructions to, to shop with you in the future. So the next page I want to talk about is the notices page. So this is a great page to speak to your customers, share any relevant news, um, any information, and really anything that makes it easier for your customers to buy from you. 
make sure to include a link to your shop on this page, even if it seems obvious to you how to find your shop, it's always good to include a link here. So this is what it looks like in the back end. So um, this is where you'd be able to change the information on your notices page. And you can edit everything here. What H2, H3, H4 means is just different formats for headings. So it helps you to kind of format the page. You can use this button to turn a word into a link um, by, press, by highlighting and then pressing this button and then you can insert the link and it just looks a lot tidier than having lots of long links. You could then turn a, wor a word into the link. And I wanna go through some examples here. So I'm gonna start with New Dawn Traders. And if we go to their page, you can see the way that they've used this page. So they've used it to give information about who they are and what they're about. Um, they've all, so they're telling a bit about their story here. They've also given some instructions and um, used some of their kind of key messages here. They've also got a collection of different links to help to develop the relationship with their customer when they come to this page. For example, join our mailing list or follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. And they've also used this space to talk a bit about what's going on, so their current news around coronavirus, which is, a, which is a nice way to keep the customer informed. So now I want to talk about Helston Local Food Hub's use of this space, which I believe is really effective. So I really like their intro message. I think it's nice that they turn this into a request. Please read this notice before placing an order. It's giving a really clear direction to the customer about what to do. And also they've used this space to describe what they are. So the customer, so a new customer who may not have used this type of service before can understand how to use it. For example, likening themselves to a click and collect service, which again, it just helps the customer to understand. They've made how to shop really clear so to click on this button it's highlighted it's easy to find this link straight through they don't have to scroll up and find it here they've got another route here and also a few instructions of how to make the shop page work for them so for example filtering items by producer etc talk more about this later in louise's section they also have used this space to use really effective messaging that communicates the benefits to their customers for shopping with them which this is uh, altruistic benefit to the local food economy. And that's really nice because it's inviting the customers into their mission. It's a shared mission to improve your local, your local food economy and therefore your local community. They've also used this space to explain order cycles and give instructions. And this is, it's really good to keep things as clear as possible for your customer and help them to shop with you and know what to do. Try and see everything through the eyes of a new, brand new customer who doesn't, who's never shopped with you before and doesn't know what to do or what to expect. Let's go back to the slides. And the reason why you want to make it as easy as possible for your customer is because that helps to build a positive customer relationship. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to optimize your shop, shop front visually. And the reason why you want to do this is because visual consistency generates trust. So if you're using the same font, like if the size of fonts makes sense, like you're using bigger fonts for headings only, you don't have a mishmash of different font sizes going on. Um, this then helps to generate trust because it seems consistent and professional. The association of muddled fonts and sizes which don't work together is with spam online. So if you've got kind of like weird different, like loads of different fonts going on and loads of different sizes, it's going to have like this negative association as being unprofessional or spammy. And it can also feel confusing to the customer. And it's always good to keep in mind that a confused customer usually says no. And just try to keep things as kind of clear and easy um, for your customer to understand as you can. And it's also a nice space to, it's, an, it's a nice thing to think about how you can improve your shop front creatively. And we did a really nice webinar last, not last, yeah, last week um, about seasonal marketing. And you can use this space to, for example, change your banner with the seasons. We're going to be running another webinar later on in the month, at the beginning of next month, about Christmas marketing. So we could talk a bit more about that there. And... 
Another thing I want you to consider um, is to, is your use is any use of capital letters, and capital letters are generally read online like shouting, and they're also much harder to read for your customer. So again, it's always thinking of things from your customer's point of view and making it as easy and as yeah as easy for your customer as possible to engage with your space online. If capital letters are harder to read, this takes more mental energy. And we all know what it's like when you're looking at lots of things online, trying to digest information from a screen is actually hard work for your brain. So if you can, t even if it's just a little bit more energy taken to understand capital letters, then it's, you know, it could be enough for a tired person to just be like, I don't want to deal with this page and turn off. So yeah, so it's, and also think about the use of capital letters when you're writing rules and regulations, it can seem really um, like abrasive. So it's just think about how you'd communicate to a customer face to face and try and represent that in the way that you write as well, if you can. And linking to this is thinking about your messaging. So you want to help your customers to understand why they should buy from you. Think about your key messages. You know, what do you want your customers to know about you? What do, you, what do you know that they care about or want from you? And how do you want your customers to see you? And think about how you can communicate that. Keep it as clear as you can. And yeah, make it easy for your customers to buy from you. Give clear instructions and step-by-step -step instructions so customers know what to do and what to expect. There's lots of research that shows that literal step-by-step, step, step one, place an order. Step two, collect. Like, obviously with a bit more detail about what your customer can expect, but there's a lot of research that shows that that's actually a lot, yeah, a lot easier for someone to understand and people are more likely to react positively to those kinds of cl very clear, almost obvious instructions. So the next thing I want to talk about is how to get more people to come to your shop front. So let's think about email first. So email is a really effective tool for lots of reasons but for the purposes of this session I'm going to talk about its use to communicate order cycle opening and closing times. It's really important to send an email prompt and shops that do send order cycle closing prompts usually get 10% more si sales for cycles when they send a prompt compared to the cycles that they don't and in those emails always always include a link directly to your shop page. So again, it's just continually making it as easy as possible for your customers to shop with you. And just going back to my original like, point about the order cycles close page, when the cycle is closed, make the most of the order cycle close space by leaving a positive message and encourage people to join your email list because then your, this is a service for your customers who've hit that page because by joining your email list, next time they'll get a reminder. So it's thinking of your emails as a service. And there's lots of easy ways to do this. You can create MailChimp automations. And I did a session before, which is the very basics of getting started with MailChimp. Um, when this session is over, these slides are, will be shared in the Facebook group, as well as if you're seeing this video on YouTube, there's a link to these slides in the in the caption below the video. So you, this, this video takes you through all the steps to get started with MailChimp to help you with this. And also you can use social media as a tool to drive more people to your shop front. You can communicate your order cycles opening and closing on social media. And again, you can automate this. And um, we've done some sessions before on how to do that, um, which are in the Facebook group for the Thriving Food Hub Facebook group. On social media, whenever you're communicating an order cycle opening or closing, again, always include a link directly to your shop page. And use social media to make it as easy as possible for your followers to shop with you. And the first thing you can do to do this is to change your sh this button on, on your Facebook page to shop now. So when you go to your food enterprises Facebook page, as a page editor, you'd see this box as grey and it would say edit and then whatever you're using this button for currently. So edit shop now in this case. So you just click on this to edit it and then turn it into a shop now button and include a link directly to your shop front. And again, it's just then any customer who's on your Facebook page can click really easily through to your shop and the same thinking goes for Instagram as well include a link here in your bio to your shop directly to your RFN shop front 
And if you're using this link space to, to for other links and actually you also want to drive people to your website to learn more about your hub or you want to drive people to an email list um, landing page to grow your email list, there might be other things that you're trying to do. You can use something called Linktree to create a page where you can host more than one link. So it, it shows up as one link here. People click on it and they've got a selection of different links they can use with you. My preference here is just to have straight through to your shop, for, shop front page. I think you usually have, if you have one clear goal that you're aiming for, that's much better for your customers to navigate and then just trust that they will then explore and learn more about you as the relationship develops. But I always use this as kind of prime space to have the clearest action that you want your customer to take. So that's it from me. And now Louise is gonna talk a bit about how to optimize your products on your OFN shop front. I'm Louise, I uh, mainly do support for OFN UK. And a part of that role, obviously I get to browse through lots of people's exciting shop fronts and stuff and I do notice things and also although I don't have uh, the marketing knowledge of Kay I am a customer everyone's a customer everyone has to buy food and so I maybe think like a customer a bit <laughs> when I see things and I uh, obviously I have knowledge of the um, back office of OFN so these are some things that came to my mind when I've been looking through um, and I think everyone if every hub at every level can always uh, do a little bit reviewing of their products. So first of all, um, most of you are hub managers um, or shop managers and if you want to edit the products um, of your suppliers or, um, or people who supply you, then you'll need to, them to give you permission and they can either do this by adding an enterprise permission to um, edit products or they can add you as a manager of their enterprise. Um, just have a chat with them and first of all and say why you want to edit their products if you do want to or what you could do at the end of this session. Um, Kay's got a crib sheet which we can put in the Facebook group and you can just um, send an email to your uh, suppliers and just give them some pointers about how they can um, edit their products if, if it's something you want to do um, and I just thought you might have like a list product list of 2,000 products or something and you think oh my god I can't possibly even tackle any of that but I think over the winter especially with Covid um, and it's a, if it's a rainy day we're going to all have not a lot to do so just maybe if you have an hour set aside um, just think about maybe I'll just have a little browse and look, see if there's any of the products here that I can have a bit of a, give them a spruce up. So um, the first thing is like, do all your products have photos, especially if you um, started up your shop front in um, March and in a rush because of the lockdown. Um, many producers uh, put their products online really quickly and they might not have had time to always get a photo, but it does really draw the customer's eye to the product because that's all you've got to sell your product on, the photo and the name. Um, so um, if, if you can't take a photo of the product yourself, you can always look online and see if you can get some standard photography, um, standard images. Um, the next thing is the product name. If you're, um, the, the, the photo and the name are the really things that you've got to sell the product, uh, to get the customer to um, want to know more about your product, to even click on it. So it has to be accurate. Now I know from um, talking to producers and uh, hub managers that um, the name is a little bit contentious because people have worked out that the shop front listing is, um, it, the shop front is ordered alphabetically or it, it ordered by category and then alphabetically within the category. And so there's a little bit of competition to always start the product name with A, but I really advise against that because you'll end up with like, a loaf of bread and a jar of jam just to get to the top and it doesn't really matter and I'll show you why later I would say um, you know if it's white fish then start with white fish oops back another idea that some um, hubs do is ask their suppliers to prefix all their names by their um, supplier name so that all of um, like this has got all of Chris's products um, together on the shop front um, 
this is probably is attractive to maybe your suppliers um, uh, who have their names start at the start of the alphabet A to M, for instance. Maybe not so attractive to those that start N to Z. And also, if you think about it, if you go into a real shop um, and you look at the ketchup, for instance, you don't get um, you get all of the ketchups together. You might get a bottle of Heinz next to a bottle of Branston, etc. But um, you don't get all of the Heinz products together or all of the Kellogg's products together at the cereal. So it's 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 a nice way of doing it, but it's not essential. Um, every product should have a category assigned to it and you can order your shopfront by product categories and you find this under your enterprise settings shop preferences. Um, if you're trying to decide on an order for the, your shop categories or departments on your online store, think about what you do when you shop, when you go to a real shop. Um, you might want to put two departments which you visit regularly or most people visit, um, spread them with a less regularly visited department in between. So someone browsing between fruit and veg to get their bread passes the jams and they might pick up something extra. Um, and then this is something that Kay and I talked about yesterday. In my view as a, as a customer, I find it really annoying when you go into a real shop and you know the layout and then suddenly they change it all. Um, but I know from the shop point of view, um, if you change the the layout every so often, like reorder your product categories, then it it can increase um, buying. It it really depends. Um, you can make a decision to stick to it, or you can make a decision to change it every so often. Um, with the shop front categories, you can use this to sort of as a manipulate this to spotlight a different product each week, especially if you've got a social media campaign to highlight a product of the week. Um, you can temporarily change the product category of that item to special offer and then put special offers as all, um, all products in special offers at the top of your list and then they'll fill it top. This is an example from Tribe Zero Waste which have uh, special offers at the top of the list and then the rest of their products are alphabetically sorted underneath. Um, when you're browsing through your products, one thing to consider is that um, are there any that are really, really similar that you could um, edit so they become variants rather than a separate listings. So things like um, that are exactly the same product but sold in different weights or a very similar product and sold in different flavours. So this is an example of raspberry sold in different weights. But you might have jams and it's the same jar size jar of jam and it's you have a strawberry a raspberry um a black currant etc you could sell and put them in as um variants and obviously this is a view of how you do this in the admin and you can follow these slides and um, when we post them in the facebook group um if you need a refresher on how to create variants um just remember that if you are adding um changing your products to add them as a variant add variants rather than and delete the master products then the variants of the master product don't always get automatic well aren't automatically added to your order cycle so you need to go and then edit your order cycle for them to appear on your shop front um, especially if you're in the habit of cloning your order cycle they won't appear so you need to go in and edit and then this is, um, I think, quite an underused um, a part of the, uh, the product listing that you can manipulate and uh, really do suggest that you, if you have time that you go and add in some information there. Um, it's the product description box. It, it does take time, but it is, it is what could convert your maybe shopper into a real, like, I'm going to buy this thing. So, um, Kay is going to is written like a crib sheet that you can download afterwards of um, how to write a really great product description. These are just some things that I came up with. Um, so just a sentence or two about what makes your product special. Um, you can add links to the, someone showing a video of someone making the product, for example. If it's fruit or veg or meat, people might um, in the past in your real shop ask you how to cook this. So you could always put a link to a recipe. And then there's sort of basic information like allergens, storage, approximate best before date and stuff. 
and really think about what questions uh, people have asked you at the market store or in your shop in the past in person. Um, I come at this from experience of um, it, it, being a country ma markets producer and I would go along every um, Friday and a lot of the customers would ask about the food and um, can you freeze this and if you didn't have the answer um, yes or no they put it back and say oh I won't buy it this week I'll find I'll buy it when I know whether I can freeze it or not and um, it's like obviously if it's online then you're not there in person to answer that question or if it's on your actual product label you're not then they don't have the product label in front of them um, to have a look to find out it find out the information so it's those maybe customers um, if they have the right information they might buy and to have a little look at a bit of idea of what to put in a product description uh, you can always look at supermarkets um, see what kind of information is standard on theirs um, obviously you don't want to copy supermarkets we don't want to be supermarkets you want to be much better than them but um, it does give you the kind of idea of what customers might want to know and um, Kay will give you a um, sheet to download later now there's probably two types of customers or three and so people probably do a combination of the two they'll either do their shopping by browsing through your shop um, your shop front and your products or they'll know exactly what they want and they'll search for it and they can filter your product list by the filters on the right either by category or um, property and then they can use the search box at the top obviously we've covered profit product categories but product properties um, you can only have one category assigned to a product at the time but you can have as many profit, profit properties as as you want and um, we've got a quite an extensive range so really make sure the products um, you're highlighting all the properties the wonderful properties that they have so there's things like certified organic certified halal kosher um, we've got um, produced within 15 miles um, vegan um, special dietary requirements lots of things and Christmas I just added Christmas and if there's anything that's missing that you really think yeah that would really be helpful to us then just drop us an email we, if it's popular with other people as well we can add it to the pro product properties list and then searching this is something that isn't very well documented um, the search box if you go into edit product on the uh, right hand side is a menu and then you can add in search terms if you just click on the bottom um, of a field search now it, it, the, your search box at the top of your product shop it will search based on words in um, your product name and your producer's name they're, uh, what they're, the producer's called their enterprise is called and keywords that are found in this search box so instead of having really really complicated and long product names to get all your keywords in the product name it's much better to have like a short and clear product name and then put your extra keywords in this kind of invisible box the search box so you can put things in like homemade handmade locally sourced and all that type of thing in there and this is an example here where uh, for the cake listing, I've added the search, ter um, search term bread and I've also added the search term homemade. And obviously homemade doesn't feature anywhere on the cake or, or uh, which is the product name is cake or the um, producer name which is OFN um, UK Demo Hub. So that's a quite a useful little tip. And yeah, just going back to that, I didn't mention it. You can always review your search terms sort of like seasonally. Um, so add in things like now um, customers might be searching for Halloween gifts for example they might be searching for their, their uh, weekly shop as well but they might want to drop in like Halloween gifts so you can put Halloween in now and then nearer Christmas you want to put Christmas in um, and yeah so this is what I was going on about at the start that um, your listing products don't have to be perfect um, there's no such thing as a perfect product list uh, because if you look at the competition at grocery stores online everything is all a bit jumbled up for example here we've got I don't know tomatoes next to carrots figs next to lettuce etc it's it's not everything together and then even on this is saying freeze again um, 
I typed in apple to the search engine and it brought up real apples, but it also brought out some rather random things like uh, apple sausages, apple washing up liquid, apple rice pudding. Um, and now sort of dun dun dun, I don't know whether <laughs> you're as excited as I am, but um, there's been quite a lot of changes over the last um, six months, the shop front, and it's continuously developing. But um, I think this has been quite long awaited, um, this change, and it, hoping it's going to come out in the next month or two. Can't promise, um, hopefully sooner, never know. But anyway, the new shop front is going to look a bit like this. And um, we're also going to have images on mobile. And um, one of the big changes, uh, for apart from being on mobile, is you can now see why I rattled on for so long about your product description box is that there's going to be a preview of the first sentence in your product description that will appear on your shop front listings. Um, so just uh, like obviously Kay will have more advice on this and you can contact her or have, uh, have a debate in the Facebook group about um, optimizing these the, the first sentence of your product description to make it a killer sentence. And yeah, thank you, questions. And I know I rattled through that um, quite fast. I think Kay's just gonna do a little bit, but yeah, I'm more than happy to, after Kay's stepped in and talked to you a bit, um, to answer any questions on what I said. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, shall I carry on sharing Kay or? Yeah, that's um, that that's fine. I think if we could have a Q and A now, because I'm a bit worried, because we lost quite a lot of time with the kind of making everyone move <laughs> across the Zoom. So maybe we'll go straight into the Q and A. Um, just want to say quickly that next week we're doing um a session on how to prepare for a second national lockdown, and we're going to have a few guest hubs joining us. Um, uh, there's a event in the marketing in the thriving food hubs facebook group um so i'll be posting details in there and who's joining us um so it'll be a, yeah it'll be lovely to see you there if you can make it um so i think now we've also um in the facebook group if you have any ideas or any requests for any future sessions um we'd love to hear about it so if you could I, you can either post in the thriving hubs facebook group when i share these slides later there's a link um also, you can send us an email as well um, to either support at openfoodnetwork.org.uk or you can email me, which is just k at openfoodnetwork.org.uk um, with any ideas for future sessions. And yeah, I want to get into a QA and a um, quite, yeah, straight away actually, because we don't really have much time. Um, does anyone have any questions on anything that we've spoken about today or any other questions? Or either Nick, Louise or myself. Um, it's Candice here at a pantry glass uh, zero waste shop in South West Wales. Um, I did have questions which were uh, based on the product properties um, and Louise touched on that um, in terms of we'd, we would have liked a Welsh tab and a British UK tab. Um, but Louise, you say the best way to do that is just to send you an email now rather than to talk about it now. We had um, It was nice to see the plastic uh, free tab um which is is that a new tab um yeah i think there's been quite a few um tabs uh, added uh, recently quite a, the the product properties property list is fairly extensive um we could yeah drop us an email the welsh thing is is quite nice um we there is a there is an option to put like producers within 15 miles which would obviously um mean it was produced in Wales um, and produced within 50 miles but yeah please do drop us an email and I think I'm sure that would be interesting for lots of people so, so yeah I wasn't sure do. whether it could be done as a flag or whether it just it would be written um, we in obviously we're tagging support British farmers a lot at the moment in our social media um, with it being British farming fortnight, I think. And as we move to try and be more UK and British focused, I just thought whether that could be done as a flag. Um, we do tend to write local as the product name because it helps us um, 
and um, we were right in UK as well. <laughs> uh, are we right in the country of origin in the product description? But it just adds more time to keep changing that and having those as tabs would be probably more useful for our customers to quickly see um, where things are coming from. So that's great. I'll, um, I'll write a list of all the tabs I want. <laughs> Thanks, Louise. Another thought there, Candice, is that you could use the share box, uh, I mean, the um, search box and put in like um, Welsh in the search box so that if anyone wants to know that uh, search for Welsh products, then if they, as long as they search Welsh or something like that, it would Yeah, come that's up. great. Yeah, I made, I made a few notes on the search options and um, I hadn't thought about putting Halloween and Christmas in there. So just to say, again that this uh, uh, workshop has been really useful of things that i hadn't really thought about doing so um yeah great thank you it's okay um i just want to say as well that um we'll be sharing um these slides in the facebook group um so all the slides have all of the links that we've talked about and yeah so um as it but all of the bits that you might have found interesting in this session, there'll be more information and more links to, to follow there. So um, do we have any more questions? Um, it's Candice again. <laughs> um, we have various producers that we need to let them know. Um, we, we keep our order cycle open. Um, and so for example, we have a bread maker and um, we try, to um, within the cycle let her know by midnight Wednesday um, what orders we have for collection on Friday um, and so I just wondered is it possible to have a cycle within a cycle um, where you could have um, a particular producer where it automatically reduces to zero at the moment it's a lot of um, we reduce it manually obviously um, on a Thursday morning so she doesn't get any orders outside of her baking cycle um, and I just wondered whether there was a way of doing that which wasn't so time inefficient um, of us reducing it to zero then adding it back up again on a Monday. I, I wonder Nick, I can see Nick pondering on this and he's about to jump in. I, I, I'm sorry Nick, do you want me to say something or do you want to jump in? You go ahead, Louise. You're probably about to say exactly the same thing as me. I don't know what you were going to say. I was going to say, Candice, that um, instead of going through all of that producer's products and reducing their, their stock quantity, you could just go to edit the order cycle and remove her from the incoming and outgoing products section, and then all her products will be, go offline anyway. And I think that one step would be a lot quicker than... Um, going through all our product listings and doing the um uh, uh, uh doing the stock control in terms of having an order cycle within an order cycle that wouldn't be possible no. um you could set up a separate order cycle just for her but that would mean that a customer who bought for her they'd had to create a second basket to buy their other goods in they wouldn't be able to buy all their goods in one go so okay. Yeah, I think we're more because we're. I mean, we worked as a hub, and we're now working more as a, a shop, but using OFN to support local producers and as a, a pickup and collection point. So, um, I th we haven't we haven't designated her as a supplier. We've got us. Yeah. So yeah, we need to have a look at that and make it a little bit more efficient in terms of having to get up at four o'clock in the morning to just take all our products off, just to make sure she doesn't have a last minute order. <laughs> That's great, thank you. Yeah, I, I just just to add to that, I, if, if it is a four o'clock in the morning job, then I, I really like Louise's idea of a single click will take a, a producer and all of their products out of yeah. off the front by, by taking them off the incoming part. But if you do have to do that at four o'clock in the morning, that's a bit of a pain. So the, yeah, the other option is again, one that Louise mentioned is that you have that at four o'clock in the morning or whenever it, whenever it is you need to stop selling their products, that that order cycle closes and the new order cycle opens that doesn't have them as part of the, um, that doesn't have them as part of the order cycle. Yeah. Then any orders that were placed after that point 
could not include any of, of those products. Yeah, we have um, we've kept the older cycles um, open, um, uh, for con constantly open, and then um, so it's never closed. Um, I think we we probably work differently um, to a, to food hubs per se, as in terms of how we order things in being a, a shop front um, as well. So that's selling local products. Um, okay, I'll have a think about that. <laughs> Thank you both. We're really happy to talk it through, Candice, if you want. Um, if you want to go through it in a bit more detail, we can yeah, actually help okay. you what we're doing and, and uh, review it with you. Okay. Thank you. I was just wondering, Candice, Helen, and Sandra. Um, I was just wondering for any kind of feedback because this is the first time I've done any kind of how to on using the interface and I, I didn't want to go too deep into really complex skills so I kept it really quite basic this time. Um, I just wondered uh, what, if, what type of things, are there any how to's or any kind of things that you'd like us to cover in the future? Um, I know that sort of like customising your customer experience and tags and stuff is one thing that's come up but I know that can also be quite confusing so I just wondered um, what any if it, anyone had any dying things they wanted to know for next month well for me I'm quite new at doing all of this so at the moment every, everything you do is is <laughs> teaching me something about it so um, yeah, I mean, I found this really useful this afternoon. I've taken away quite a lot from it. Um, and yeah, I think just more explaining as you go along for me would be really helpful. Cool, that's really helpful, Helen. Thanks, because it, 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 it reaffirms what I thought was a good idea to start relatively simple. and <laughs> Certainly for me, yes, thank you. <laughs> and for me for making the slides, to be honest. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering, Louise, uh, Candice again, um, it's, um, with the tabs and um, properties, I've kind of tried to use the online um, community to put the questions forward so that everyone can see, but I don't know how long um, that takes and whether it's easier just to email the, um, the support or whether that is just too much information being bombarded or which is no, the best way to communicate with you so that you get Candace, this feedback um candice just email us by support that's fine yeah okay brilliant thank you because i know myself that it, things get lost <laughs> in community forums and um yeah so that's great thank you that answers that question Right, okay, so it's 25 to 6. Um, does anyone else have any, have any other questions for us today? Um, no, I'm okay, thanks. Awesome. And I, uh, can I just be nosy? I'm really interested to know which OFN shop front Helen and Sandra are with. Just doing it. Um, what do you mean by which off OFN shop front you're with? Um, I, I'm I've lost you. Nick, you've muted yourself. Just checking, Helen. I, I, it sounds like you're using the Open Food Network, um, and I'm wondering what your enterprise is called. What what your? If, oh right, if, I'm I'm less troubled. Um, I've just pushed up there. Oh, I'm sorry, Helen. Yes, of course you are. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> You've helped me enough. <laughs> your name. I'm very sorry. sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm a bit tired. We've, we've been working a bit hard this week and I'm, uh, I'm losing it. <laughs> Don't worry, I was only teasing. I'm sure you meet lots of people. <laughs> it's great to have you on the call. Thank you, Helen. Okay. And Sandra, who are you with? Hi, Nick. I'm, I'm not with anyone at the moment. I'm just looking to see whether I can use it because I'm the only person in this area that I can see that would be using it. I'm in um, Suffolk, I'm in Felixstowe, and there's 
very few people around that use open food networks so it would be just me on my own and i'm not sure if that's a good thing great well i'd be very happy to talk to you about how and, and kay has got lots of ideas about how once you've got a shop front set up you can reach out to to local buyers and shoppers and um and, and build a following for your for your shop front but I'll be very happy to talk to you about that. And again, just use the support at openfoodnetwork.org.uk and we can we can have a screen share session and talk you through some of the options if you're interested. Lovely, thank you. Um, like Louise, I'm a country market producer. So I've got a little bit of an entry there, but there's new rules and regulations coming up and I'm not quite sure which way I'm going to jump yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just to say, Sandra, Candice from Me Pantry Glass, we use the Open Food Network to bring um, local in Wales um, um, meat suppliers, being, um, and it was really useful because we couldn't get to market uh, because they already had um, one of each kind of stall holder anyway. Um, unlike France where they have a whole line of different produ same producers in a line. I think it's if you come in late to the market, you don't often get offered a stall. So, um, and when COVID hit, we found moving back to the Open Food Network um, was really useful um, for us because we were familiar with it. So, and I find, it, find it's one of the easier online shop fronts to use so um yeah i just want to pick up the open food network it saved our shop anyway this since march <laughs> we've kept open yeah i understand and i think it looks a very good site to use my problem is felix though is at the end of the line as such the next step is the north sea so it's getting people to come down to a peninsula because yeah it's also the pickup side of things and whether I want to be available for X, Y and Z days and things like that. Yeah, it does take and a lot of think time. About it. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. what I need to think about. Um, I'm near retirement age, do I want that kind of commitment? It's little details like that. If there was two or three of us doing it, we could share the workload. Definitely, it needs more than one, I would say. Um, it's a big commitment. Um, yeah. as you say on your time and people coming um yeah it's 24 24 7. <laughs> thank you great so thanks everyone for coming and sorry again for slight technical hiccups in the middle um when i share the video it'll be edited out so if you want to review this session and everything we talk through um, the video without the middle bit is going to be up in the Facebook group. I'm just sharing now a link to the Facebook group if um, in the chat if anyone wants to go there and, and join today if you haven't already. Um, I know most of you are already in there and um, yeah and otherwise this video is going to be on YouTube so you can just search um, the topic optimizing um, your OFN shop front in YouTube and you'll find this video. Hope to get this uploaded and edited um, ready for you tomorrow. Um, the slides will be there as well in a link. Great, so yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Um, and unless anyone's got anything else to add and wrap up, I'm gonna wrap up and hope everyone has a lovely evening and it's lovely to see you all. And yeah, thanks again. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks. Thank you everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks for coming. <laughs>